Great. So thank you for giving of your time uh, over this weekend, starting with this Saturday, to, to give of your time for yourself to come here. And, and I get it that you've come here today to, to get something or to work something out for yourself. I'd like you to think about what you would be doing if you weren't otherwise here today. Where would you be? Who would you be? What would you be doing on a typical Saturday morning? Travelling, yes, great, thank you. What else? Sleeping. Swimming, sleeping would be quite a popular one, I think, for quite a few people. Right? You'd be getting up to quite a few different things, or not, as may be the case. Right. Now, just exactly this time, a week ago, I was sitting on board an aeroplane. I was on my way home from Iceland. And, and I was in Iceland for three different reasons. The first reason was that in order to get to Iceland, I had to stop over in London. And that afforded me an opportunity to spend some time with my parents who are living in the UK. And these are my parents. And one thing really struck me when I arrived in Heathrow Airport is the sight of my dad literally wading through the crowd with this huge beaming smile on his face. And he came in and enveloped me in this big bear hug. I've never seen him do that before even though he's always been relatively happy and excited to see me, this is the first time that I've really seen him really come out and envelop me that way. And this trip especially gave me a, a special moment of reflection. And it really dawned on me after, well, 40 years of existence that my parents do love me. I've kind of got it on intellectual level at some point that they do. Uh, but this is really the first time where I, I really got it in here that Wow, they have been my biggest champions, my biggest supporters, and the people who have truly loved me unconditionally throughout all these years. And this reflection also allowed me to gather that they haven't been the only people who have contributed to how, who I am today and where I am today. Over the course of my life, there have been different people who either have a relationship with me, or perhaps no, they were strangers and at some point in my life they came in, made a difference and then they laughed again. And I'd like you to just take a, a minute. And in this minute, I'd like you to think about, well, 10 people who have similarly contributed to you, supported you or helped you in your life. That because of these people at some point or another, you find yourself here today, where you currently are in your life and who you currently are as a human being, as an individual. Who are these 10 people without whose love, care, generosity, you wouldn't be here today? Well, let's take a minute for you to think about those 10 people. And I'm going to keep time. If you looked at yourself today, you would realize that all the efforts have borne fruit, or at least have begun to bear fruit. We'll come back to them in a moment. Now, the second reason that I went to Iceland was to have a holiday. And those of you who have been to Iceland or have seen the travel brochures or seen the photographs on Facebook of Iceland, you would know that it's a country of enormous beauty, a land of such varied landscapes from volcanoes to lava fields to glaciers to icebergs to mountains to ocean side. And one of the stresses sometimes I find with traveling to countries where there's so much to see and so much to do is that there's this fear of missing out. That when I go there, I, I want to see it all. I want to do it all. I want to experience it all. I want to capture it in my head, in my heart, in my iPhone and on, on my Instagram. And I, I, just, I just don't want to miss out. And so typically at times like this, we, we set a plan we have a, a, an action plan. This is, this is what we're going to do on day one. This is where we're going to be driving to. This is where we're going to stop by. We want to see this waterfall. We're going to stop by the glaciers. We're going to try that particular activity. And, and that was what we did. That's what we started off with. Except that on one particular day, as we were driving to the Glacier Lagoon, which is where we wanted to head to, where we could take a trip out on the, on, on the waters to, to be among the icebergs, before we got there, we saw a little turn off down a dirt track. And it didn't seem right, this turn off. Because according to the map, according to the times that we've been advised, this is not the turn off that we're supposed to go down. But there was something that kind of like spoke to us there. And we thought, well, let's, let's veer off 
from the plan, right? Let's, let's, let's just drive on to this dirt track and see where that, that track leads us. And about 15 minutes later, we came across this. There's nothing wrong with the audio quality. That's what we heard. It's just silence. And apart from the four people whom you might have noticed there as those four dots, what was conspicuous in its absence were the hordes of tourists, which we did find later on down at the Glacier Lagoon that we headed down to. And this area that we found subsequently in comparison, this was far more beautiful, far more striking, and far more awesome than what eventually chanced upon. And when we look back later, we thought, my gosh, thank God we kind of like got lost. Thank God we veered off the track. Thank God we did something different. Because we got rewarded with something that we wouldn't otherwise have seen, have experienced. And those few silent minutes of just being there, being in that moment, and just allowing ourselves to be awestruck, The only thing I've taken away from that physically is that video and two photographs. But there's a lot more in there that I took away from, from several days of traveling. How often do we do something for the first time? How often do we allow ourselves to veer off that beaten path to try something different and just trust that there could be something in there for us? Hard though it may be, that was the second reason why I went to Iceland for a holiday. The third reason that I went to Iceland was to volunteer. To volunteer in a race. What was going on there was a week long of an ultra endurance race where 270 pretty crazy people from about 50 over countries converged to run 250 kilometers in a self supported race. And what that means is that everything that you would expect to to wear, to use, to eat, you would carry on a pack on your back. And, and I went there to volunteer. And again, this volunteering <coughs> exercise or activity was not planned. I had actually signed up to be a competitor in the race a year ago. And as we got closer to the date, I thought I'd do something different to volunteer instead, to be on the other side of the racing fence. Because being a competitor was something that I had done before. I had completed a series of the same kind of races across four different deserts. And that was in the deserts of the Sahara in Egypt, the Gobi Desert in China, the Atacama Desert in Chile, and the Polar Desert, Antarctica. And having had that, that experience of being that competitor of that racer, I thought, why not try something different? Let me be a volunteer. Even though it did not make any sense, when I turned up and I met my fellow volunteers and, and, and the staffing team, people asked, is it? You were supposed to race in this. Why did you choose to be a volunteer? Because as a volunteer, you are like the lowest of the low. There's, there's no glory in volunteering. The glory lies in being that competitor when you cross that finishing line and everyone's celebrating your success. And to be a volunteer means you are working a lot harder than the competitors do. Right? The hours are longer because you wake up before everyone else and you go to sleep after everyone else. And as a competitor, all you need to do is to focus on yourself and your own performance, that's all. But as a volunteer, you need to think about every single person, every single one of those 270 people that come through my checkpoint, I need to look out for them. I need to look out for them physically, mentally, medically, and all of a sudden, my whole focus becomes not just about me, but it's about these other people. And it is not the most gratifying our roles in a way because while you're in service, you sometimes end up being treated like a servant. So typically, what might happen would be we could be manning a checkpoint and you might have competitors that come in and let's see, the problem with being a volunteer is that you are like front line, front office, right? A customer service and you're representing the organization. So unlike the staff 
who have privy to you know, information, who have decision-making powers. As a volunteer, you really don't. You're, you're the messenger. So we bear the brunt of whatever competitors might, uh, might have as a grouse. You know, they come in and go like, you know, that course, this last section, that really sucks. You know, why would you design a course on such terrain? It's really tough. And all I can do is just go, would you like some more water? Or you might have people come in and go like, at the previous checkpoint, they told us that it was 9.8 kilometers to get here, but I've checked my GPS and it's 10.2. Would you like more water? <laughs> oh, they'll go there, yeah, the organization doesn't make sense here. Right, how can you do this? And you, know, you should go back and tell the director or the event organizer, or you should go back and tell the course director to do this, that and the other. Would you like more water? So it's quite a thankless task sometimes. So why volunteer? Why put ourselves at the bottom? Because after all, you know, when we look at the quality of our lives, when we look at the quality of our careers, we tend to want to be at the top. And that's what we've been taught to, to push for, to earn more money, to have more decision-making powers, to close more deals, to climb the corporate ladder and reach at a higher level. We want to be at the top. And yet, there's real value in being at the bottom, to be at the lowest of the low. And in fact, we've all been at the bottom before throughout our lives. Think about your education. You know, you go through your primary school and at the end, your final year of your primary school, you're like the biggest boy or the biggest girl in the school and everyone else is young. And then you go on to secondary school and all of a sudden, from the big boy or big girl, you're the one wearing the shorts. And then a few years of that, you progress and you wear the long trousers and you think, hey, well, you know, O-levels, you know, this is it, you know, the world's my oyster. Then you go on to the next stage, whether it's a polytechnic or, or to, your, to a junior college pre-university, and again, you become the lowest of the low. And then the scenario repeats itself. You go on to university or you go on to the army and then you step into your first career and every time you start at the bottom. But that is where the real value is. Because at the bottom when you're nobody, that's where you learn to be somebody. And if you pay attention to these lessons, you will learn to become a better person. You will learn to bite your tongue more often. You will learn to empathise a little bit more. You will learn to give a little bit more. You will learn to listen more. You will learn to be a real human being. In fact, you will end up being one of those 10 persons whom you thought of earlier on. Because every single time when we talk to admire the heroes in life, we think, well, it's got to be that hotshot corporate titan, you know, that, that charming leader or that rich entrepreneur. But normally when we think about the 10 people in our lives who make the biggest impact in our lives, seldom are they in the public light. These are the people that sometimes are pretty much anonymous, but they're the ones who make the biggest difference for us. And by being at the lowest of the low, that's our chance, that's our opportunity to learn how to make the biggest difference. Now, what's that got to do with our career? Well. The quality of our careers are inextricably linked with the quality of our lives. You can't run away from that. And the quality of our lives is inextricably linked with the quality of our relationships. What is the quality of our relationships? If you could rate it, what is the number that you would give it? If you could use words to describe it, what are the words that you would use to describe it? Now, the quality of relationships depend not on what we can take out the, from the relationship. It's not what we can gain. And in fact, this weekend, we come here to think about, okay, how could I use this spark challenge? How could I take my life to a next level? How could I take that first small step forward to move forward? And you will get something. You will gain something. But my challenge to you from today onwards, for the next 30 days, and in fact, beyond is in order for you to get something out from those relationships, I want you to ask that question. And that question that you either ask the other person or that you ask yourself would be, James, could you just flip the slide for me, please? And the next one, please? Probably the next one is this. 
how can I help? Think how you could be of service to someone today, or to someone every day, and ask that question: How can I help? That can shape your intention in your interaction with the other person. Now I know this whole challenge is about measuring the progress, about measuring the success from that. And some of you might be thinking, but if I ask that question, how how, how, do, how do I measure that? Do, is it just the number of times I say it? Well, I think the measurement would come in terms of your own quality of your own life. Do this for thirty days and think: What difference has that made for you in terms of your interactions with people around you? What does it do for you in terms of your daily fulfillment? And the quantifiable stuff from this will come a lot later, because the people who benefit from you, from your counsel, from your time, from your love, from your energies, from your advice, they are the other ones. They're going to come to you when they have opportunities. They are the other ones who are going to be thinking of you when they want to form a team. They are the other ones who are going to come to you when they think, "I want some partners for these." They are the other ones who are always going to come back to you. Because they know that they are going to grow in your space and yours in them. So go ahead and try something different. Instead of asking what's in it for me, ask how can I help. And you just never know the kind of rewards that you will get at the end of it. And with that, I thank you all very much. <laughs>